Following Japan's declaration of war on the United States, Hawaii has been under two air attacks today. More than ten persons were wounded when enemy planes machine gunned a town near Honolulu, according to a Reuters dispatch. And General Douglas MacArthur has ordered all women and children in Manila to evacuate the seacoast and move to areas inland. The Dutch East Indies has just declared war in Japan, and Costa Rica in South America has also declared war. Keep tuned to this station for further developments. Sanctum Mystery, brought to you by the makers of Carter's Little Liver Pills, the best friend to your sunny disposition. Good evening, friends. This is Raymond, your host, welcoming you again to the Inner Sanctum. Come in, won't you? Why am I smiling? Oh, but I always smile when I open the creaking door on Sunday night. You see, each week when I say good evening, I think to myself, a good evening for what? And of course, there's only one answer to that question. A good evening for a murder. Tonight, the Inner Sanctum Mysteries brings you The Island of Death, an original radio mystery drama written by Robert Newman and presented for your entertainment by the makers of Carter's Little Liver Pill. Friends of pleasant disposition shouldn't be just a a once-in-a-while affair. It ought to be a regular thing. See if you can't make it regular by encouraging regularity with Carter's Little Liver Pills. Let them wake up the flow of one of your most vital digestive juices and prove to yourself that Carter's Little Liver Pills are the best friends to your sunny disposition. Now I think we're ready to begin. Ready to begin as strange and terrible a tale as ever turned a man's hair gray overnight. A tale of voodoo, conjuring, black magic. Oh. Oh, now you're smiling. You don't believe in voodoo, huh? <laughs> Good. Now turn down the light, pull your chair up close, and listen to the story of the island of death. Come with me to the Dark Island, the secret magic island, Haiti. It is night. A fierce tropical storm is raging. A car drives slowly down the road with a cane field in one part of it, a jungle on the other. Now which way? I don't know, Jim. Last, Brandon. Why did he let us go off alone? How are we going to get back there? But he told us not to go off alone, John. (laughs) John, look. Where? Ahead there. An old native walking up the road. Oh, maybe he can... Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, you! Hey! Now, what's the matter with him? Is he deaf? Now, you keep blowing the horn while I put my coat on and go after Muriel. All right, John. Well, there's something wrong with it. Hey. It doesn't work. Well, it was working just a minute ago. Now, what in the name of... something, monsieur. Oh, so you did hear me. Why didn't you come when I call you? I am not in the habit of coming when I'm called that way, monsieur. Besides, though I am an old man, my ears are very sensitive. The noise of your horn pained me. That's why I stopped it. You stopped it? Why, you? Well, okay. We're looking for the plantation of St. Jack. Are we on the right road? <laughs> you are on the right road for many things, monsieur Good. Right. How did you know my name? It was told me. Oh. Well, how do we get there? If you go down this road one mile, you will see it on your right. And when you get there, well, perhaps we will meet again. If we do, I'll... Hey, where did he go to? Oh, I don't know. He just disappeared. Mm, step back off the road into the jungle. Well... At least we know where we are now. Yes. John. Hey. Do you suppose he was a Papa Loy, a witch doctor? What on earth makes you think that? I don't know. The way he looked and talked. And after all, the horn did stop working. Oh, is that you, 
Coach? No, Alan. Oh, yeah. All right. All right, Mrs. Coach. Alan, do we have to make things even more difficult than they are already. Would it make things any easier if I pretended that we were just old friends? But it didn't matter to me that you'd married him instead of me. No, Alan, I, I guess not. I'm sorry, Neil. I, I didn't say. Uh, hello, Alan. Order me a drink, will you? Of course. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Coach. Yes, Mr. Randall. I would. Did you find out what was wrong with the horn? Yeah, one of the wires had come loose. Hmm. Met an old native on the road, and Muriel's convinced that he was a witch doctor. But it's just that he was so strange, and, well, even though I know that there are no such things... What we I... know or believe isn't terribly important. What is important is what the natives believe. They don't like being laughed at. You mean they really still believe in voodoo, stuff like that? Well, you're Up here. Do you believe in voodoo? But not really, monsieur. Oh, this is funny. <laughs> this is really funny. <laughs> hey, what's that? The drums. Nothing, monsieur. Just the shield hands doing the Dutch Congo. Oh. Well, they can't have done a hard day's work if they've got enough energy to dance at night. I think maybe I'll go down there. Oh, no, monsieur. No. What do you mean, I must not? I am sorry, monsieur. I just meant... Well, if you were interested in voodoo conjuring, perhaps I could show you so. You care? Oh, I am no papalwa, monsieur Van Dott. I have some skill with the knuckle bones, telling fortune. And if monsieur Cody would like... No, why not? Go ahead, sir. Very well, monsieur. There. An arrow nine times. That means unhappiness. For whom? I see a city far away from here. I see two men, both in love with the same woman. Yeah, easy, Alan. Let him finish. Stop, yeah. One of the men is rich, powerful. The other is not. The one who is rich has his rival sent away. And in his absence, marries the girl. She knows she is making a mistake. Oh, she does, does she? Why, you ain't the last. Come, stop. That's too cold. How dare you hit him for two cents? I... Ah. All right, Mr. Bender. He did not hurt me. Oh. Well, I haven't even started yet. You're fired. Just a second, Coach. Oh, Brandon. I had a hunch you weren't getting as much as you could out of the natives. That you were too soft with them. Now I know it. You're fired, too. John. So that's why you insisted I come down here with you. Of course. Don't you think I know that you're still in love with him? Okay, Coach, you asked for it. I'm oh, no, you're not, Alan. I've got a gun here. Now you stay where you are. I'm going to have a few hands. Hut and really show them who's boss. Alan. Oh, Alan. It's I... all right, Alan. Being fired doesn't bother me. But the other thing. Are they true? But it's really you are love. Made you even ask. Monsieur Bendel, excuse me. But I think you should know. The drums. It is not the Dutch Congo. It is the Serdic Petro. Si Marron, you sound with the Dutch. What? Who is Si Marron? He is the most famous witch doctor on the island. John may be a swine, but he thinks he's him. This is Muriel. You stay here with Pierre. I'm going after John. Exactly what I've been looking for. The place where they hold their 
of spookaroo. Listen, John, I never did like you much, and I shouldn't really care what happened to you, but the white-haired native that brought me in here, you know who he is. Sure. The old coot I met on the road earlier this evening. He happens to be Timaron, the most powerful papaloi in Haiti. Yeah? Well, when I get finished with him, he won't show his face around this plantation again in a hurry, but... Take it to 
I've got to. I, I can't stand anymore. I, ever since I shot him, those drums and the jungle surrounding us, waiting. Now listen, Pierre. I don't care what it costs. I don't even care about Muriel. But I gotta get away from here. Oh, but that is very easy, Monsieur. The egg. If you will take the egg from Timarone's finger, smash it, you will be able to go. Take it? But that means that I... that I'd have to touch him and... I... Well, all right. I'll do it. Hey. He's holding it so tightly, it almost as if... There. Ah. Here it is. Drop it. Break it. There. Now. Now, can I go? In just a moment, monsieur. But you said that yes, I... Yes, monsieur. But I would not advise you to move at just this moment. Turn around. Slowly. A snake? Bushman. Deadly snake there is. Not just a bushman. It is Dambala. Look well at this place, O Dambala. Look well, so you will know it again. That's for your Dambala. I've had enough of this. Now I'm getting out of here and I'm taking Muriel with me. Start walking, both of you. Back to the house.
<laughs> How do you believe in voodoo? You don't? Oh, no. <laughs> Come here. Come here, a little closer. I'll whisper something in your ear. Neither do I. And let me whisper this in your ear, folks. There are just 15 shopping days until Christmas. Full of rush, hurry, and crowd. About all you can do is face things armed with a good disposition. So don't let irregularity get you down. Get after that logy, cross, irritable feeling with Carter's little liver pills. Let them wake up the flow of one of your most important digestive duties. And help turn those 15 shopping days into 15 shopping days. Full of the glorious, glad-to-be-alive feeling that goes with regularity. Remember the name, Carter's little liver pills. Yes, and remember this, too. Christmas comes but once a year. But year round, Carter's little liver pills can be the best friend to your sunny disposition. Well, this is Raymond, your host again, getting ready to close that squeaking door to the inner sanctum. Until the same time next week. And don't forget, there's safety in numbers, so be sure to have all your friends listen with you. Remember, all names of characters used on the Inner Sanctum Mystery broadcast are entirely fictitious. Now, um, if you should happen to get into an argument with anyone about whether the dead come back from the grave, about goats without horns, black magic, and conjuring, whatnot, uh, remember the old saying. Voodoo unto others, and you would have them voodoo to you. Have you read this month's Inner Sanctum Mystery novel, Trial by Fury, by Craig Rice? On sale at your favorite bookstore. Good night. Sweet dreams. Listeners, be on guard. Don't let it sneak up on you like a thief in the night. What is it? Listen to this report from the Harris home. As Mrs. Harris says to her maid... Hannah, I'll never give another party. I'm going straight to bed. Oh, before dinner, ma'am. I'm exhausted. Oh, those chatty, noisy women depress me so. I wouldn't be too quick to blame the guests, ma'am. You've been kind of edgy and cross all week. Not like yourself at all. Oh, you're right, Hannah. I'm sorry. Oh, I know how it is. And when I get to feeling that way, I know it's time to try Carter's little liver pills. Right, and when you don't feel good, try Carter's Little Liver Pills. They do the work of calomel, but have no calomel in them. Well, they are simple pills made of vegetable drugs. They wake up the flow of one of our most vital digestive juices. When this vital juice flows at the rate of two pints a day, it helps to digest our food and bring back the glorious feeling that goes with regularity. Then most folks feel like happy days are here again. But be sure you get the genuine Carter's Little Liver Pills. 25 cents at all drug stores. This is the Blue Network of the National Broadcasting Company.